Okay, but to get started with the topic for today and this week's uh, exercise, so we will be focusing on maps, plotting, uh, visualizations of well, geographies and then the geographic information, the attribute information related to those geographies, so mainly vector data. We are plotting in this lesson two sections, static maps, interactive maps, and then we'll learn how to share our maps online using GitHub. And basically the exercise also will be about creating a static map, creating an interactive map, and then sharing those on online. So I'll start uh, by showing you um, some examples from last year, mm, maybe from here. You'll, you'll then learn how to build this page. So here is, for example, some maps that Tatu made, who was the assistant uh, in the first period. I asked for permission to show these. So um, Tatu has created in the exercise one static map or actually two static, map, static maps, I'll show this one. So plotted educational levels as thematic maps um, from Helsinki. I don't know if those are not postal code areas or a bit larger areas. So something like this where you use some data from uh, the course or you can get some new data from the web. Uh, do you have some little data analysis uh, or classification and then visualize a static map that you could then save, uh, for example, as a PNG file. And then the second part is about interactive maps. So some data you can interact with, zoom in and out, maybe click on, on the icons. So this has been created using Python, but the end result is uh, written in JavaScript leaflet. So we'll be uh, learning how to do that. It's the same aerial units, and then there's some, some tooltips showing, showing the data. Then there's a legend, uh, and then, then there's, well, the scale bar is here. You can zoom in and out. So these two kinds of maps will be learning how to do today, and you'll then dive deeper into that in the exercise. I'll also maybe show uh, Sakari's map. No. Let's go back from here, mm. from here. Uh, so f then just show this, this one. So for the interactive map socket, fetched some data about seismologic activity around Finland and then plotted a heat map using this uh, volume package that we will then use for uh, creating these interactive plots. So I think that's quite nice if you zoom in then the map kind of uh, interactively re-renders the hotspots. Mm. And then finally Let's not forget about Sara. So Sara made some maps based on the travel time matrix data. <coughs> so there is, for example, I think these links should work. Uh, so it's the same idea as was it now in exercise five. So you have dominance areas, but these are dominance areas for fire stations in Helsinki. So she fetched the, those travel time matrix data sets, visualized them <coughs> using scripts from the exercise four. And then it's the same, uh, same then with the travel times to the closest uh, service. So for example, these kinds of things, a bit adjusting the examples from the, from the lesson. So Something like this you can already almost do, but this week, uh, today and Thursday is then about uh, zooming into how we can then control different elements related to statics, static and interactive maps. <laughs> mm. There we go. And I thought now, actually, while we're still checking that everybody has their instance, so you could start by download, downloading the data. So we'll first discuss the static maps. Uh, I'll show this in a bit, but if you are fast, you can then download the input data. So there, there are three layers. We have travel time um, 
matrix data to railway station already as a shape file. So we have uh, merged the grid and then the text file into a spatial layer. And then there's two vector layers, roads and metro. And the idea here would be that we plot one map with all these three layers on top of each other. Uh, so first you should check, uh, so it's this static, static maps uh, Jupyter notebook. And you should first check uh, the coordinate reference systems um, of those three layers. If they don't match, reproject them. Uh, and once they are in the same projection, uh, the task would be to plot all those three layers on top of each other uh, into one figure that we can then save, save uh, onto the disk. Mm, and then downloading, downloading the data would happen on the terminal uh, using these commands. So first navigate to the lesson five folder, then using wget, download the data, and then unzip the data, and the data should come uh, into a folder called data. So is, is this now clear? Have to think, think yourself how to harmonize the CRS information and then how to plot these three layers into one one map using the geopandas plot command. So how I approach this uh, topic, let's see. Yep, I'm still missing the data here. Sorry. I'll demonstrate that then also. So the first task was to download the data. <coughs> I'll do that in here. Paste. So I don't know if you noticed, those who are, have been playing around with Finnish geospatial data might have noticed that the roads and metro were kind of intentionally in this old KKJ Finland Zone 2 coordinate reference system. So it has this EPSG code, but it's kind of, well, for some maintenance purposes, this might be used uh, in some organizations, but often then this is kind of, a dep well, I would say that it's a deprecated coordinate reference system. So in this case, it's then of course good to project to the CRS of the grid. And we can uh, do the conversion then so that we say that convert this layer to CRS and then kind of on the fly pick the CRS from the grid. So in this way, you kind of make sure that they are identical also by definition. You could then of course use this CRS uh, package to then define it as the well-known text string or other formats but for our plotting purposes this is enough and then finally uh, if you have se two or several layers you can then check with these boolean operators uh, if all of these are equal and now that after I run this code cell in here so then they are equal and then we can plot them on top of each other. So that is kind of the starting point of any overlay analysis, any uh, mapping layers on top of each other. Uh, so just as a reminder of what we have been learning in the past few weeks. So then the plotting, mm, I'll just go ahead and copy paste my code in the interest of time, maybe at least to some extent. Uh, So one approach would be to then uh, first plot the grid. I'll plot this one, uh, one at a time. So when plotting, you can define the attribute column. So based on this uh, column, you want to visualize the shapes. Then uh, something, uh, we have polygons, so the line widths 
Then there's a color map. Uh, you can see these options from the matplotlib documentation. So there are many of these kind of predefined uh, color schemes. Oops, sorry, that was now the wrong link. I wanted to show this one. Uh, so for example, on this page, you can quickly quickly see. So just use this predefined name for the color scheme. It's also then possible to define your own color schemes using these kind of uh, color color codes which is then explained here as well. Uh, so there I was using, using the spectral, spectral uh, color scheme and then a color map and then the classification scheme from the map classify package is quantiles in here. You probably have different settings in there if you did it on your own. With the travel time data we can have kind of a high number of classes because it's continuous data so we want this kind of uh, spectrum and then this alpha parameter adds a bit of uh, transparency so as we will be now plotting layers on top of each other so we can do that and then you could of course just when plotting one one layer you can do just layer dot plot and it gives you the output you can save that but when we are plotting several uh, several la several layers um, into the same figure object. We then need to save that into a variable so that we can refer to that. I need to run this from the top. So as I had here, for example, my map. It's often after this I will call it ax, uh, which is quite typical when using matplotlib. So then when I add uh, now I add the roads, so I do roads plot, and when plotting, you can then define the subplot object using the AX parameter. So we want to plot to the same object uh, the roads. We can adjust the color uh, and the line width as as we want. And here, of course, the order matters. So the first layer that we plot comes to the bottom and then the second comes next and so on and so forth. So like in a GIS, so GIS software, uh, the or order in which you have the layers in the layer control then is obviously the result. Uh, next, you can add the metro. So we had the metro geodata frame dot plot to the same figure object with some other color uh, a bit. Uh, more thick uh, line width and then finally there are these um, sorry I'll take these out so there are some of these uh, matplotlib pyplot uh, functions we can use to kind of niceify the output so often especially with maps you might first try to use this PLT tight layout also with regular regular plots, uh, so it a bit optimizes the way in which the plot uses white space, so minimizes the white space in the figure. Uh, and if you think about best practice, practices for designing maps, you always want to kind of maximize the information, so the data and minimize white white space. Uh, and then finally. If we have plotted a figure that's now in memory in the uh, in this Python instance, so you can say define uh, a character string file path and then save the figure. So that's the basic plotting workflow that we have already used quite a lot. Also with then mm, x y data for plotting some graphs. And the same same principles apply to maps. So, is there something in this process, plotting one layer and then plotting several layers in the same figure, that you are puzzling? Maybe the subplot axis, the, this my map object, and the figure object, and then how to control the the x and y labels and all these sorts of things. That's then often the tricky part when you're trying to make a nicer nicer output um, but then 
how I have also done often is then to save so plt save fig uh, let's define some new output file path so there is this format called SVG, so a vector format which you could then, for example, open in CorelDRAW or some other vector graphics software uh, to then, for example, manually change the labels if it becomes a bit annoying uh, in Python. So then uh, this would be output file path 2. And then uh, there is, is it then I need to check now because the notes are not updated. So this is pyplot save figure uh, function. And now that I don't remember the parameter, I'll just check it from the documentation. So there is this um, uh, 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 format parameter which, which can then be, you can save PDF files, whatever you like, by defining this output format. Mm. And of course, here the point would be that you can imagine we have these 13,000 travel time matrix data sets, so then we could automatically produce some kind of map output, a simple data analysis output for the maps using Python. Uh, so then format uh, equals to SVG, maybe. little space in there. So now I should have the static map as a PNG, PNG image in here uh, with some kind of resolution. So there was this uh, DPI parameter with this dots, dots per inch. So the higher, the more precise the output image. So if you happen to have, I can maybe demonstrate after the break how to open this uh, figure in in Corel Draw, if I happen to have it on this laptop. One more thing I want to highlight with this basic plotting uh, workflow, and like what happens in here, plotting a layer, defining uh, the bigger object uh, or the subplot, and then plotting additional geodata frames onto the same figure object. So that's the most central thing to know about plotting uh, map data in Python, and all the all the rest kind of nicifying the legend and stuff then then you will always have to kind of google what was this what was this parameter but then of course the figure size um, is quite important so how we will be for the rest of the lesson doing this um, is that we will be actually using this figure so figure and subplot or subplots syntax uh, using the pyplot subplots um, function, which you used uh, in exercise four. And there, if you only have one subplot, so this is the default syntax for creating a single subplot. So what you want to control here is the figure size uh, in inches. So something like 12 and eight would, ma would make this uh, image that gets plotted a bit bigger. Uh, and now, of course, I'm just creating an empty template and still plotting to this other uh, other image obje object. So now I need to reference plot all of these to this subplot. So now I'm changing my code so uh, that I replace my map with AX. So this AX is one subplot object. And then we, when we refer the same subplot, we can add items. Uh, into the same same figure. Is there still something else? I need to add the grid AX equals AX. So you have these two options uh, with the my map uh, my map uh, variable, and then using this figure subplot object, and then adding everything into that one object on each row. So here, indeed, if you want to increase the figure size, then this is the place place to do that. So based on this information, we will then 
uh, learn a couple of more tricks with static maps. But it's mostly most useful when you're doing the exercise, try to explore like, oh, how could I add how could I add X and Y labels? How could I do this? And then often whatever you want to do, you are able to do then with um, matplotlib pyplot. So often you need to then refer to this uh, matplotlib documentation to get more help. The GeoPandas documentation is more about examples as are are our web pages as well. Okay, uh, any questions ab at this point about plotting? I think now I start to improvise, but I think um, if we do this, so I added legend equals true and now that I'm using this uh, map classify or based on the map classify the scheme parameter, so then I get this quite nice, in a way, nice, nice legend. So probably in the, the exercise session, then we can share a bit more hints how to control the legend object. So it's kind of, if I understood correctly, it's kind of a subplot within the subplot or it's its its own object and then it has its own attributes and controls. But only by this, if you have this uh, classification scheme, legend equals true, this is already quite nice. What I would do next is to save as SVG, go to some some external software and then make a nice, nice finalized map for a publication or so. Question, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good point. Maybe I won't improvise it here now, but what is a scale bar eventually? Or how could we make a scale bar? Yeah. So we could, like last time we plotted these, is it then vertical lines on top of the histogram plot, right? So here we could plot a horizontal line. So here the x axis, these are meters. So we could plot, uh, let's say then, thousand meters long line starting at certain point and then plot then one kilometer text on top of that. So um. that's the idea. Then with the static maps it can be handy to add uh, a base map. So that's, that's now the second part of this static map pl plotting lesson. So this is something you can do and explore also for the exercise. Um, in here, so there's um, a grid uh, code cell with some uh, package imports, so we're still using GeoPandas, Matplotlib, uh, and then there is a package called Contextily. Mm. Which you can find from GitHub, uh, so it's, well, Contextily, Contextify, uh, your data using uh, geographic tiles, so it, it brings in kind of raster tile uh, raster tiles uh, on the background of, of the data you are plotting based on geographic coordinates. Then, uh, and then there's a few few details that should be observed from the documentation. So we should be working with either VGS84 coordinates or then this kind of web web mercator coordinates. So these are des in decimal degrees and then these are in meters. So that's the current standard for background web maps. Mm. And for this one we will use the same data, we're just importing it here uh, again. <coughs> And if you're working on your own computer, um, I have added here while that's loading. So in the installing Python and GIS last week, who, those who were here, we did some installations. So I have now updated this uh, 
under this uh, creating a new environment using Conda. So up until now, all the packages and then of course the related dependencies are listed in here. So if you're setting up your own environment for this lesson, you need uh, now this is the first new package. So it's contextually and then for the interactive maps, we are using Folium and MPL leaflet. So those uh, those three packages are new this week. Uh -huh. Yeah, so let's restart this thing. Let's just start from here. And again, sorry for. Okay. So that's in there. Uh, let's just double check the CRS. So as we learned uh, learned previously, mm, just run this once more. Yep. I take that one. Uh, So the CRS of the grid layer is this EPRS uh, TM35 thing, which is okay. But as we learn from contextually documentation, we need to have the coordinates either in VGS 84 decimal degrees or this web mercator, uh, which is a metric global uh, web map projection. So uh, let's project to that. Uh, a common EPSG for the web mercator is 3857, uh, but there are also other codes for that, but this is the most common, common one. Mm. So if you then uh, compare, this is the data now after projection, projecting it, so you can see that the geometric coordinates have changed slightly. So these are now the web mercator coordinates uh, and these are the original uh, ETRS TM35 pin coordinates. So again we need to be on top of the things regarding coordinate reference systems. Uh, okay, uh, so then the next step if adding base maps uh, is to plot the data. So we can do data.plot uh, and then let's pick one of the columns. So for example the public transport uh, at rush hour travel time. Mm, we can pick a scheme. That should already work. I'll just test Yep, uh, and again, to just repeat what we just did, we can use all these available matplotlib color maps. So one typical way there in the examples we have this, this is now R, D, Y, L, capital B, U, if you want to change. No, I'm missing a comma. Um, okay, that's quite nice, and again, for the travel time matrix, I can increase the number of uh, classes. So, so far we have done nothing new. Then as we discussed, uh, let's actually do the plotting so that we create this figure uh, and subplot uh, using the PLT subplots so that we can control the figure size. So fig size, I'll use this 12 and 8. Uh, and when we're doing this, then we need to plot the data into that subplot that we define in here. So here we initiate a figure object and then we plot this data into that. To get a bit bigger picture, 
there are the no data values in place, but we can ignore these uh, now. And then uh, using contextually, adding a base map to this bigger object now that we have reprojected the values. So the syntax goes like this. So it's CX, CTX. Where does that come from? So we have imported contextually as CTX. So basically contextually dot uh, add base map base map uh, and then as a parameter it takes the bigger object. So there it looks like at least that the Baltic Sea is it in the correct place. So then if you have somehow not managed to reproject the data correctly, then you'll see some funny background maps from a random place uh, on the Earth. And then here we could add a bit of transparency. So it was the alpha uh, parameter that I briefly mentioned in the first task. So in this alpha, um, Alpha parameter one is complete uh, fill and then zero is fully transparent. So you can test a bit what works if having multiple layers. So there's, you can see a bit, but this is just to exemplify the basic workflow. So first plot the data as usual, do your classifications, choose colors, whatever classes, and then if needed, uh, we can then add the base map while the data is in uh, the web Mercator. So this is, this is now quite easy because it's, it's this top level, top level package that deals with most of the things as long as the data is in the correct CRS. Mm. Uh, so now there is some, well not random but we don't get well, we can see from the attribution, so it's a stum and design map based on OpenStreetMap data. Uh, but if you run this cell below, so you can see uh, the available um, kind of tile providers. Uh, so there's three different uh, OpenStreetMap sources, and there are these stum and design uh, stylified OpenStreetMap. Uh, maps available from this contextily package. So similar maps you can then add in QGIS as well. Mm. Yep. So maybe you could now do so that take, if you have been following, take copy paste this um, this this piece from here. Uh, And then uh, try to use some of those base this syntax called CTX. So it, it's the add base map. Uh, and then you need to provide, you plot the map. So you have the AX in there. And then there is this reference to the source. So URL. And then using these uh, tile providers, we can then. Mm. For example, take, well, it says ST toner, we can do that, ST toner. I think I should take the plotting of the data as well in here. So maybe a good idea to plot the data again. So try to try to do that. You can also try some of these uh, other background maps. I'll just do a little quick. Mm. So this was the syntax. I could also have some other uh, OSM E, for example, of these tile providers. It's a bit slow. Now there's the basic 
basic OpenStreetMap data behind. So I'll, t I'll still show how to take a subset. Uh, if if you, for some reason you want to focus focus your map on some particular area. Oh, yeah, sorry. So two ways of subset subsetting. We can of course first subset the data itself. So I'll follow follow what I plan to actually show you. So you can take a subset uh, using the usual pandas uh, geopandas functionalities. So data dot lock. Uh, and we can do some kind of a selection uh, from there. Mm. So, for example, if I would select, I make a condition based on uh, one of the columns here that we are plotting. So the travel times, mm, so I want all the travel times that are uh, real. So here I'm excluding the no data values. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, let's subset the data a bit. So let's take all the travel times that are less than 15, mm, like this. And probably you need parentheses around these conditions. So one condition, other condition, and then a combined condition. So this creates a pandas series with true and false values, and then this data lock uh, locates those rows in there. Uh, just check what we got. Mm, so it's the same structure. Mm, and then we can, uh, of course, plot that one. So you can do subset plot. Can try that and then uh, let's add again a classification. So based on that column. Mm, and what did we have? We had the scheme equals quantiles. You can also copy paste these parameters from the previous previous example which I dropped in here so color map uh, with the red ones and so forth and at least a bit of alpha in there uh, so the transparency and then if you would uh, add using the CTX add base map we still need this can also do you can have this figure ax equals something or you can have on the fly this uh, variable in there mm. okay so here at least I would want to make this a bit bigger. So as we did before, figure AX equals PLT subplots mm, fig size. Uh, like that and then replace this. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. But this way you get some control on the figure size. So here you can see a bit better better than the details. So in this kind of map, I would say that then the background background map ac actually adds adds some adds some value in there as as we only have a subset of the subset of the grid squares. It, they don't cover all these areas. So here there's only those grid squares from where it's 15 minutes to the railway station. So for example, Kulosari metro station and so on. Uh, and then here you could again test different background maps. Uh, so yeah, so then what I was first starting to explain, I may be jumping a bit so that we can have a break. Um, so I'll jump now down I was doing this, so copy, try to, if you're following, copy this uh, 
script where you are uh, plotting the original data. So copy it here where it says let's plot the original data and crop the map. So that's what I was starting to explain uh, before doing the selection. So then if we want to indeed without subsetting the data itself just to reduce the bigger uh, extent based on the coordinates mm, then we can uh, operate on the subplot object again so there are these uh, different functions uh, related to the subplot uh, and here we're using these set xlim this a bit up and then ax set y lim so limits to the x axis limits to the y axis uh, so then uh, for the x axis we could say check that okay we want to limit this map to the city center only so uh, these are now the the east eastern coordinates of the spherical Mercator so we have to refer use those uh, those coordinate numbers. So, for example, something like two seven six zero 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 could be the kind of western border, and then uh, maybe something between these two. I'll put two eight zero uh, zero 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 zero, and I hope I have enough zeros in there. And then set likewise to the y limit. So I can maybe pick that one eight four three zero how many zero 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 and then the upper bound for the y axis doesn't matter but just one of these so that we focus on the extent of our data. Let's see if I got it right. So there was the original lines for creating the figure object, plotting the data into that figure object, then adding using contextually to that figure object one of these uh, base maps from the tile providers, and then uh, from the figure object just setting the X and Y borders. So as you can see here, when we are now using the web Mercator, the grid is a bit tilted, but that's because of the projection. So of course, then if it's in the original uh, 3067 EPSG coordinate, so then, then it's actually northwest uh, orient oriented, but it, it's now a bit tilted, but not so much. So that's then one way to zoom in, so always you don't have to kind of zoom to extent. You can also, depending on the phenomena you are visualizing, then also change, change the focus of the map area. And here again would be nice to have a scale bar and so on. So let's let's uh, come up with a scale bar example as well. And again, this uh, then using the PLT save figure, as we did in the beginning. Mm, so you could save. Save as a PNG file or then SVG file. You open it up in Corel Draw and finalize your map. But then, of course, if we were producing thirteen thousand maps automatically, then you might not want to open all open all of those in Corel. So then you might want to develop your plotting algorithm with one of these uh, travel time matrix datasets and then just run for all and then save as PDF and deliver the report. Uh, so that's, that's that. Then there's this final thing with the base map. So you can also use these kind of from whatever tile map service uh, provider. So it's often the syntax is like this. There's some server, so some place physical storage for the map. Uh, then there's some parameter for the style, zoom level, then the coordinates uh, and the scale. Mm, I'll maybe just show this from the web page so that we can 
um, have the break. So in this example, we are using a base map from CartaDB. So we are setting a URL to their map service or tile map service. So again, there they are serving these kind of raster tiles for web maps. Uh, and we are defining there is this raster tiles Voyager. So this is the map kind of map style. There's other other ones available that you can see from the list there. So there's some dark background and so on. And then we create the URL. So the uh, map style goes in there. And then we leave those as original because then our geodata frame defines how the background map should be focused. Uh, and then again, you can plot the data or the subset. Mm. Uh, and then using contextually uh, define as the URL this uh, tile map service address. And then uh, as an output, you will get, sorry, um, but, um, yes, that's great. Don't have the outputs in here, but we can. I can make them happen after the break. So then, uh, using this this syntax, you can then uh, use use dif different available tile map services over there. Uh, but let's let's have a break unless you have some questions. I 